jo Jason Ellis cast media clip and let's see what he's saying here about the whole affair and then we go on to the other ones as we continue play wait, wait for me one sec let's play it there hello everybody welcome to Jason's live Instagram this is Rumble Bean this is Rumble Bean Rumble Bean doesn't know how to do poopies or peepees in a cat box he does peepees on dad's t-shirts and he does poopies in the dog bed so so far so good um you, are you seriously trying to put your fucking bum hole in my nose? Dude, bruh. What? What, Rumble Bean? I have something serious to talk about. Do I have your full attention? Undivided attention? Come fishing in Boston. No! All the vegetables and all the meats that you get in Boston. That's Here's my theory on Boston. Boston people are bigger and stronger because they get... The healthiest of vegetables uh, trickles down to California. I'm making this up as I go. But still, I believe Boston people are bigger and uh, it's because they were raised in the cold and they get fresher vegetables. Thank you. So anyway, I have to talk to you about something uh, that involves podcasting. You're going to hear a bunch of podcasters talk about it, but I wanted to be one of the first... Obviously, I'm a lot smaller than some of these other guys, but we're talking Theo Vaughn and Brendan Sharbs and people like that. Those guys referred me to when I got let go from Sirius to start podcasting with a company called Cast Media. And this off, off. This Cast Media thing is giving FTX, isn't it? Theo and Brendan referred him to flipping Cast Media after he got let go from Sirius. It's giving FTX. Yeah. guy that owns it named Colin Thompson and uh, those guys did a terrible job with the Jason L show and with Hawk vs. Wolf to the point where uh, we tried to get out of the deal and we had a one year deal with Hawk vs. Wolf and then when I said there was a meeting to negotiate a second year and I was like when is this meeting going to happen and they were like, yeah, we'll get right on that. And then the next week, I was like, when's this meeting going to happen? They're like, oh, man, you missed the deadline. So oh you have or automatically re-signed for Hawk versus Wolf oh for a second year. And I was like, That's, that seems mean. You know, like, that seems a bit pushy. But okay, I don't really care. I don't know about podcasting. Maybe that's what they do. Uh, mind you, I think I spoke to Colin one time in my entire life. He was definitely didn't have time for me. I think it was more about having Tony Hawk on and he was keeping the Jason I'll show to, to keep Tony. Uh, so we went through a lot to get out of that. At one point, he threw slander and, exact, and, and some other stuff at Tony. And I was like, if it's at me, I might actually believe you because I'm guilty most of the time. But at Tony, I was like, I know for sure he... he he does what he says he's going to do. He always does. You can count on him. <laughs> so, uh, we're begging to get out of it. And then they don't even know who they are. They don't even know that it wasn't a two-year deal. It was a certain amount of episodes a year. And because we were working so hard, we had already done the two-year deal. And when they realized that, instead of letting us go, they said, you're fired. <laughs> Wow. And you, you're terrible and, you know, Tony Hawk is impossible to work with. Just stuff where it was like, wow. you're insane. So I just took it as, I'd rather be out mm. than deal with it. And then, you know, I, I don't face the money thing much. I It's been pretty depressing since Sirius left. Every time I ask a question about money, it's bad news. Jesus so Christ. I kind of left that alone. And then I found out recently that... Does anyone know why you got let go from Sirius? Was it some bad behavior thing? Was it job cuts? Like, why did he get let go from Sirius? Because he seems to be really cut up about the Sirius thing. He seems to be still thinking about that bag that he left at Sirius. That's why he kind of walked into this dumb decision with Podcast One. I wonder what happened at Sirius. Cass had decided to not pay us the money that they, that they owe us from working, from the reads that we'd already done prior that had been out there. 
Uh, and I was He's pretty born. angry about that because it's about enough money to pay off the debt that I'm in from not making any money from podcasting. And I was like, hmm. Uh, and then uh, another guy that works for Colin. These niggas are going to, into debt to be podcasters. There's nothing more lamer than that, right? It's already lame that you do a podcast. I do one. I know how lame it is. So to then get into debt trying to make that podcast of yours full time trying to make it a job is ridiculously redacted you should do what all people do work a regular job do the podcast on the side and if something happens that allows you to make maybe i say like double of your like monthly job salary maybe you quit or maybe you don't like i actually i actually sort of like envision a future where i just decide you know what even if this stuff does take off and I'm able to make a amount of money that maybe matches my actual job salary, I could see a path where I just keep my job because why not? Why not just make, you know, an extra bit of income on the side if it's not hurting the stuff that you do? But these guys seem incapable of having normal jobs. Sometimes I think they look down on having a job. It's as if like it's beneath them or something. <laughs> when in reality everything they're doing now is kind of a job anyway they're making these videos pleading for people to pay them attention to tick a box or put content out there it's all kind of the same thing so why not just get paid for your time you know it's not that big of a deal really like why not just get paid for it like you don't have to do a full-time job it could be something remote it could be something part-time but just get something that so you have a little bit of money coming so you're not putting all your eggs in the basket of podcasting because I'd imagine even in a, even when it's good, again, I don't know nothing about podcast money saturation because mine doesn't make any money, right? I spend more on a month, you know, hosting and paying for services and shit than I do actually make it for me. But I don't care, I do it for fun. But I'm sure once you start making money from podcasting, much like anything in the entertainment industry or content world, it takes a while for you to even get the funds. So even if you sign a deal with a big company, you don't maybe get the funds straight away. It might take a few weeks, a couple of months. Maybe you, you signed with a monetization platform. It doesn't take, go away straight away. I mean, everything takes a while. So why are you just sitting around waiting for these big checks to land? You could be making an actual salary on the side and increasing your monthly amounts that you're making and saving loads of money on the side. I don't know. I don't know. It just feels weird. I get the feeling a lot of these guys just look down on having jobs where really it could alleviate a lot of their pain and struggling because I look at this guy's eyes and he looks like he's in pain. He looks like he's actually legitimately struggling and this is, you know, this is taking a toll on him. And it's actually quite brave for him to come out and say this first because it looks like the podcast one thing or the cast media thing is affecting a lot of podcasts, especially some of the bigger ones. But they're not talking about it because they want a safe face or they want to, They've been given promises and reassurances that they're going to get their money. So they don't want to say nothing, but they're hurting behind the scenes. So if it's affecting those bigger dudes, imagine what it's doing for guys like um, Jason Ellis, who's a bit on the lower rungs of, you know, podcast celebrity status and shit. So it's brave of him to come out and say stuff. But again, maybe all of this stuff will be alleviated if you just had a regular job on the side that could, you know, balance out some of the unpredictable waters you wade through when you're doing podcasting and shit. Maybe. Who knows? His name is Shane, I believe. And he told me that he was no longer friends with Colin. And then he called me three months later to say that Colin has gone bankrupt. Cass has gone bankrupt. And he's starting a new company, which I didn't know you could okay. do. Okay, Co Coil is calling cap on this. Okay, I don't know much about Jason Ellis, so please forgive me if I'm talking out my ass. I literally, the first time I've heard him speak at length is this clip right here. I don't know nothing about the guy apart from he's bisexual and he skates and he does, what, fighting and shit. I know all those type of but I've never really heard him speak. I don't know his thoughts on certain things, so um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and he would like to have myself and Tony back on his new company. Uh, and he offered me the money that he owes me from the other shows to leave Melka and come over there. And I said, if I don't go over there, will you give me my money that you owe me? And they said, no. What? Um, How's that work? So they stole my money. Uh, and they insulted me by offering my shitty job back, even though, like, Melka, our show looks great now. 
So Jesus they were doing Christ. a shit job. So I've never been happy with that. We don't make any money. But I'm sure that'll turn around. But then I get a call from Brendan Sharp. Then I get a call from Theo Vaughn. And apparently this Colin guy has been taking everybody's money. And ran with it and declared bankruptcy and is now starting a new company and trying to hire a bunch of us to go back. That happened to me a couple of times. I've worked in many different startups. And one of the main things that happens in startups, one of the main things that is sort of incredibly hard to take when you're working at a startup is when they give you false promises or when they don't pay you. It's so brutal because you're so helpless you can't do anything and there are some people i'm not the type if you don't pay me i'm gonna kick up a fuss and i'm gonna do some unforgivable things unforgivable things to get my money back but i'm also not the person that's gonna you know turn up to work but i know some people that i've worked with who you work at a startup together you're not getting paid for a couple of months but they get put in a sticky situation because they still need the money so they still keep turning up for work hoping hoping that one day the punt they're going to get back paid for everything that they're owed. But when it's me, I'd rather just quit than continue paying, working the place where they're not respecting me by giving me my money on time. But the, I have worked in other places where, you know, because sometimes businesses go down because of no fault of the founder. Sometimes just things don't work out. That's the nature of business. But at the places where they don't work out, where there's been one only one place like that where I've worked, where I worked before, where the business just didn't work out. Um, you know, it's it just, it just didn't work. It wasn't viable. So, but the founder was incredible. He got us all down in a meeting. He explained the situation. He gave us a timeline of what he's trying to do to save the company. But he said, most likely in six weeks, we're going to have to call it quits. But I'm doing this and this and this before the six weeks up to try and save this thing because I'm obviously personally invested. I don't want to go get a regular job. I want to make this work. This is my company. And kind of, you know, we had our six week to plan to get our affairs in order and whatnot. And that was a perfect way to kind of end it. And unfortunately, that company didn't end up going bankrupt. But I also heard of people, founders who set up startups, um, they hit a bit of a financial snag. They are poor communicators, poor leaders. They don't tell their staff, their team, their employees what's going on. They don't keep them abreast of the situation. They make false promises. The situation gets worse. Um, then the lies compound, the bills add up, and then they just decide, you know what, I'm going to declare bankruptcy. And bankrupt bankruptcy, I don't know about you guys in the States, but usually if a business goes bankrupt, it makes it harder for the employees to get their funds. You're still going to get them because usually, especially in England, we have a thing in place where the government basically will front you the money. They'll give you the money to kind of like, you know, um for the uh, whatever you're owed and then they'll kind of seek the to recover it from the company um whichever way they kind of please you kind of get a little bit of system going on so you can always kind of be guaranteed but when they do um put their company into bankruptcy it is effectively kind of drags out the process it makes it far more complicated for you to get your money back it kind of adds way more time onto the flipping timeline and it really makes it painful I'm not going to lie. It really, really does make it painful. Honestly, honestly, honestly does. So if you see Colin Thompson named on any podcast, just know that that's who you're dealing with. And if you're a podcaster and those guys are reaching out to you, just know that I don't think I've met a bigger piece of shit. Jesus. And I worked for Sirius. Jesus. Sirius paid me mm. what they said they would pay me. So look for Theo Vaughn's new podcast. He's going to talk about it. I'm sure he's going to talk about it in depth. Obviously, I'm a small fry in this game and me talking smack doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, but I think, you know, Colin needs this to go out there. I think when you steal millions of dollars off people that are fathers and that are, you know, trying to make ends meet and you take us for a ride you, you you abuse us you talk to my you talk to the god of skateboarding like yeah you're you're a piece of shit dude like obviously you know violence is not the answer but it's coming man in this life or the next the funny thing about this is that he's actually right to be as furious as he is but this is usually i think a sad indictment on podcasters 
they have this image that they like to portray of being independent of kind of being their own bosses of doing whatever they want but for the most part all of these guys behind the scenes are employees effectively they all start podcasts they all get a little bit of steam going up with their thing and then as soon as the people come in to add some money invest they take it straight away they take the investment they give up the ownership they give up the control they give up the analytics they give up the ip and they always do that because it makes their life easier that's something that i don't understand to this day i don't get why these guys at this level because even at my level right my little shitty podcast level my little shitty stream level i still get some inbound requests from people like shitty companies doing games and shit oh we want to do this ad and whatever and it's usually crap in it so i don't really pay it no mind but you get a few inbound things that usually i think happens it kind of is a trigger they must have like some sort of system on their end that analyzes streams and sees if a stream or a podcast or a video gets a particular amount of views then they'll automatically email you a request uh, like a, a proposition so i would assume if that's the if that's likely if i'm getting those offers most likely if you're on their level and you're way above you probably get loads of inbound requests especially if you're famous and you're associated with joe rogan and, and the comedy store and la scene and shit there's probably loads of people falling over themselves trying to get their product or service advertised on your pod so it's not too difficult to just sort out your own ads it really shouldn't be that easy that that hard but these guys they talk about working hard they talk about hustling they talk about the grind but they're very work shy have you noticed that they all like to sign up to these podcasts ad network sponsorship things that handle all their things because essentially that's what cast media were doing they were basically the company that kind of like you know took in all those inbound or did a lot of outbound um, advertising and getting contracts signed and then loads of podcasts had all the same adverts adverts because they just kind of divvy them all out and then they obviously pay them a certain amount once they get paid themselves from the ad advertisers but really and truly these podcasters could be making way more much money sorry way more money if they just did it all by themselves and it's not even that hard to do it by themselves because they're all famous they wouldn't have to sit there doing any outbound calls or emails it would mostly be inbound because they're well known so but they're so work shy they don't want to take that time to do it they'd rather someone else do it and when someone else does it it opens you up to a possibility of getting scammed and getting hustled and that's what's happening i bet you any money even the podcast networks out there again allegedly i have a feeling there's podcast networks out there that are legit that probably still you know skim money off the top of these um podcasts and they have no idea it's, it's probably an amazing money earner you set up a podcast network thing with ads and shit you get podcast you get a couple of ads on um you give podcasters a nice payout or a nice p percentage split and they have no idea because the money is coming into your account first and then you're paying them out you're probably skimming off the top even if it's like a grand each podcast you're skimming off the top and they have no idea what's going on because they're just living in la la land they're the, they're, they're, the, they're the talent they're the creative they just want to live and go to the comedy store and do their sets they don't want to do any business stuff. they don't want to answer any emails they don't want to stress their brain about working out percentages and contracts and shit they want to leave it all to you okay when they leave it all to you it gives you a prime opportunity to just skim some shit off the top so it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of these podcast networks are all kind of shady in their own way maybe not to the extent of how cast media was but definitely 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 shady 